All right, Craigie crew, are you ready? Remesa? Yes. Manu? I'm ready. Abraham? I am ready. Owen? Are you there? It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go. This lesson is going to be all about adding and subtracting vectors, not in component form. No, we're just going to be sketching the resultant vectors. So let's start off with a couple of vectors. Let's say we've got vector u. Who, me? No, it's a vector. Vector. Ah, vector u. And v. V? V for Victoria? No, just vector v. We've got two vectors. Let's say we've got them looking at something like this. We've got vector u. Hello, I'm vector u. And we've got vector v. Hey, I'm vector v. What we want to do is we want to add these vectors together and that is done by joining them together. Badoomph, like this? No. The way it's done is by joining them tip to tail. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And this is done by, first of all, draw the first vector. So because we've got vector u plus vector v, we would first of all sketch vector u. So we'd first draw that with the arrow on here showing which direction vector u is going. Imagine this is a vector and it's got like a wee head up here, wee wee smiley face, hello, and its tail is down here. This is the tail of it. This is the vector's butt. What you want to do is you want to join it tip to tail. So where this vector ends, just at its head here, that is where you want to start joining the other one. So you would then join this vector on here, just on there. So you've got the tip of one and the tail. So what you do is you join the tip of it uh, to its tail. Just imagine you have something like a pen. If you've got the tip of the pen, you want to join that to the tail of the pen. So the head of one, onto the tail of another. I'm sure you get the idea. So it's going to be tip to tail, so it would look something like this. Where that vector ends, you join the second. Again, tip to tail. And what you then do is you draw the single vector from the very start to the very end. What I mean by that is, when we were doing this, well, this was where the first vector started. It then went up here and you had the tip of that vector, and then you had the tail of the other vector, and that vector v was coming down something like this. So the very start of our journey was over here, the very end of our journey was over here, so what we do is we draw a line that goes from the start to the end, and we just take the shortcut. So it would look something like this, drawn it neatly just down here. How do you know which way the arrow is facing? Well, imagine it as an actual journey. If you start here and you end up here, you would have to go in that direction. So this here is the answer that we would have. We've got vector u, tip to tail, joined on to vector v. That was the start of the journey. That was the end of the journey. So we're going in that direction. So that is the resultant vector u plus v. Woo! Let's try some examples. Okay, example one, here are two vectors P and Q. Sketch the resultant vector P plus Q. So once again, what you would do to start with is you would draw a vector P. You can see vector P, it starts here and ends down here. It's got the arrow going in this direction. What you then do is, if this vector P starts here and ends down here, this is the tip of it down here, and it's the tail of it up here, so it's going to be joined tip to tail. So this here is the tip, that is where you want to join the other vector. So we would take vector Q and we would draw that from the end of vector P, just here. So you then draw the other vector, vector Q is coming up this way, with the arrow going in that direction, and once again, if you think about it, that was the very start of our journey. This was the very end of our journey. So what you do is you draw the resultant vector. It's really the shortcut going from the start to the end. And which way would the arrow go? Brilliant, if we start here and end here, we have to go in that direction. And once again, a little neater than up here. Uh, we've got it there, so there's vector P. It's joined onto vector Q, again, tip to tail. So that there is P plus Q. Woo! Alex, are you ready for another one? Yes. Then let's do it. Example two, here are two vectors A and B. Here is vector A. Ah! And here is vector B. Bzz. 
We want to draw, we want to sketch the resultant vector A plus B. So once again, what we would do is we would start by drawing the first vector. We've got vector A, so we would draw what that looks like. Here is vector A, so you would start by drawing that. Then again, vectors, when you add them, they're joined tip to tail. So here's the tail of this one. It's coming down here, so that's the head of it or the tip of it. So from this point, you would then start drawing that other vector. The other vector is going in this direction. So this is the start and this is the end. So the tail of it is here. So you would join them together. So it's something like that. The resultant vector A plus B, well, this was the very start of our journey. This is where we started this amazing sketch. This was the end of the journey, so our resultant vector would be going from here down to here. Again, think about the direction of the arrow. Caitlin, which way is the arrow going? Is it going down the way or is it going up the way? Uh, down. Yeah, you're perfectly right because this was the start. This was the end of our journey, so we had to go in that direction. And once again, a little neater, that would be the answer. And make sure when you do this, that you do say that that there would be A plus B. It's that resultant vector. Yeah. Let's try another one. Here are two vectors, M and N. Sketch the resultant vector, M plus 2N. Woo, it's got 2N. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Do, do. Let me show you. We've got vector M. That is the first vector, so we would draw that. There we go, there is vector M. And then we want to draw 2N. So what you really want to do is you want to draw 1N. You would join that on. Again, it's tip to tail. There's the tail, there's the tip. Uh, so you join the other one on. There's the tail of that one. Uh, so you join, draw vector N. But then because it's adding on 2N, well, where vector N ends, you would then draw another one. So you'd have another one going over here. So what you end up with is something that would look like this just down here. So you've got vector M and then from the tip of that one you draw the tail of N. So you would draw that vector. Vector N would end here. And then because it's 2N you would have two of them. So you just draw another one. Make sure that it is a continually straight line just going along here. What we end up with then is something that looks just like that. So there is vector M. We drew N, then another N. Really, we don't have to write N and then N again. We'll just write 2N. And again, this was the very start of our journey. This is the very end of our journey. So if we go from the start to the end, we'd have to go in this direction, which is why the arrow is pointing up the way, just like that. Yeah! Let's try another one. Here we go, two vectors, G and H. Sketch the resultant vector 3G and 4H. So once again, because it's 3G, we're not just gonna be drawing one of these. We would draw one, then we draw another, then we would draw another. So we would end up with something that looks just like that. We've got G, and then from where that ends, we've got another G, and from where that ends, we've got another G. And then from the tip, of this one, that's gonna be the tail of whatever we are adding on. So because we're adding on 4H, we would have an H just over here. But we don't just have one of them, we're adding on 4H, so then we draw another, so we've got two, then another, so we've got three, and then another, so we've got four. Again, we wouldn't write that out as G, G, and G. What you would do is you would just write that with one arrow showing the direction, and you would just say that is 3G. Just make sure you underline your lowercase letter. So that there is 3G. With 4H again, you wouldn't write that's H and H and H and H. You would just write down that that is 4H. And again, underline your vector. Uh, that is what it would look like. I'll show you on the other page in just a second. But again, you're thinking, what is the resultant vector going to look like? Well, all that is, is it's a line from the very start to the very end. So when we started this picture, we started with 3G. So we started over here drawing one, two, 3G, and then we added H, so this was the start, and this over here was the very end. So our line would look something like that, although a lot straighter. But because we're going over here from the right to the left, the arrow would have to go in that direction. So that's it over there. And again, it goes from the start to the end. So we end up with something that looks just like that. So that would be our 3G plus 4H. Yeah! 
Let's try another one. Here are two vectors, C and D. Sketch the resultant vector, C, take away D. Ah! What is wrong, Abdul? I don't know what to do, it's take away. Don't worry if it's take away, I will talk you through it. Dun, 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 dun. So, with C, take away D, in order to take a vector away, this is done by bum, 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 adding the negative of the second vector. So we would start this just as normal with we've got C take away D, we would just start with vector C. There we go, we would just draw that however it looks. Then instead of subtracting D, what you can do is you would add the negative of D. But when you add the negative, well, what does that really mean? Well, if you take the negative of the vector, all you're really doing is you're reversing the direction. So vector D is sloping down here to the right, and it's coming down this way. But the negative of that would just be going in the opposite direction. So instead of sloping down here, it would be coming back up the way. So the line is not really changing. It is just going in the opposite direction. So that there would be the negative of D, as I will show you just there. So instead of coming down the way, we'd be going up the way. And that is the negative of D. So what we then want to do is, if we've got vector C, if we add on the negative of D, well, what we want to do is we're wanting to add on this vector just here. So at the tip of C, we would add on this negative of D, just like that. Once again, this was the very start of our journey. We then went up here to the tip of C, and then we had the tail of the negative of D, and that is where we finished. So if we draw a line from the very start to the very end, well, we would have to go in that direction to go from the start to the end. So a resultant vector will look something like that. And what we can say is that that would be the C add on negative D, or in other words, C take away D. That is how it would look. Woo! Yeah. Okay now, Abdul. <sighs> I'm so much better now. Thank you. So, a summary. To add a vector, we always add them tip to tail. You're perfectly right. Add them tip to tail. So, if you've got the tip of one of them, that is where the end of the other vector will be. So, we would have something that looks like that. Draw the first vector, then the second vector. Make sure they are joined on tip to tail. And the resultant vector goes from the very start of our journey to the very end. And then think about the direction. If we start here and we end here, you have to be going in that direction. If we subtract vectors, well, it's very similar, but what you do is you would add the negative of the second vector. Just remember, if you're adding on the negative of a vector, all you're doing is adding the same vector, but in the opposite direction. So V slopes down here, so the negative of V would just be going up the way rather than down the way. So it would be like that. Again, these two vectors, if you drew them beside one another, V and negative V, they will be parallel. But that is what you would add on. So you would have U and then take away V. Again, from the very start to the very end, that is how it would look. And you've got the line coming up here, so your arrow is pointing in that direction. Give some of these questions a shot just in the TJ National 5 book or any other textbooks you like, including the Zeta one, which is pretty good. Uh, page 143 onwards, it's just questions 3 to 6. Check them once you've done it. Best of luck. Have fun with adding and subtracting vectors by sketching them. Woo! Okay, Craigie Crew, over and out.